If you enjoy longer, more thought out games that focus on quick wits, combos and adaptive strategy instead of fast paced turn 4 wins with a meta deck in standard, Commander is probably the format you want to explore. Here the players start with 40 life total instead of 20, and aside from basic lands and a few special exceptions, you can't use any duplicate of a card in your 100 card deck. You can use almost any card from Magic's history in Commander, almost, because some are banned in the format. A deck can only use cards in the Commander's color identity. Commander can be played by two players, but a four player game is where you unleash its full potential. So how do we build a deck for EDH Commander? Here are some ground rules and tips. First off, you need to set up your deck with a decent mana base and ramp, aside from just lands. Ramp is when you set yourself up with cards that give additional mana and let you play higher mana costs early. It can be artifacts, mana creatures or spells that fetch lands. A common rule most players go with is to use around 10 ramp spells in their decks, meaning that 10% of the deck should focus on adding mana advantage. Now let's focus on lands. The optimal number of lands in a commander deck isn't really universal and some would use 30 to 34 lands while others would say that 42 or more lands work best for them. A monocolor deck can have fewer lands, especially if it's green and has a lot of mana creatures. You might want to take more lands in decks with a commander which has 3 or more different colors in their mana identity. For that commander you also best take a lot of multicolor lands. The best dual lands are very expensive though. Find some alternatives in older sets. For example, the Homelands Trilands might not be as great as the Ikoria Triumphs, but they do cover you from getting mana host when not having a land of a certain color on the table. Since dual lands of different kinds are usually in the rare slot of a lot of MTG sets, you might want to be going for those when choosing which boosters to get. This way, you're slowly upgrading your land base for commander decks, replacing the weaker lands with the more powerful cards you find. Another very important aspect of a commander deck is removal spells. When playing against three opponents, you'll very often get to a point when you're behind while they have set up whole armies of creatures ready to get unleashed and win them the game soon. That's why almost every deck should have at least two, three board wipe cards that destroy all creatures and or lands currently sitting on the battlefield. There's also the matter of someone having that permanent that's about to ruin your day and a single target removal spell would come in handy that moment. Five single target removal spells should usually be a minimum for a commander deck. In other words, if in doubt, go for seven to ten removal spells. Counter spells are often considered a faux pas in Commander, although there are several exceptions. While running a counter spell heavy deck would most likely make you seem like a douchebag, it's nice having 3, 5 counter spells, especially when your Commander's color identity contains blue. There's a plethora of great blue spells which can prevent a sticky situation, but remember that there are spells outside of the blue spectrum which can also serve this purpose. For example, black has Imp's Mischief and red has Tybalt's Trickery. Although Commander is meant to be a format with longer matches, you'll often find yourself out of cards to play if you don't have some kind of means to draw more. For blue, black and green it's no issue as it's fairly easy to draw more cards with different kinds of permanents, especially for blue and the infamous Mystic Remora and Ristic Study. White and red can be in a pickle though, and while the Rhystic Body comes to help for mono-white players, it's a very expensive card and there's no guarantee you'll play it early. Not drawing enough extra cards can become mono-red's kryptonite. To balance out the deck, it's wise to add some artificial help and draw cards from the plethora of artifacts that can do that, even if they have a high mana cost. Those are the basic things that I imagine a lot of EDH players would like to know as early as possible and I feel like it's important to mention before we get further. We now know the general idea of how a proper commander deck should be built, but what about the ideas for it? There are two easy ways you can go with. Either using an existing build or build upon an official product. Alternatively, you can try to come up with your own deck idea based only on the card you want to use as your commander and the cards you feel like would synergize well. For both finding such cards and getting a complete deck list, I recommend using EDH Rec. There you can check out your commander of choice and get a list of cards with high synergy as well as complete deck ideas from other players. 
A more interesting and creative way to build a deck is getting a precon and replacing the cards within it with the ones you already have or want to get. There is currently a lot of commander products released directly by wizards that not only consist of a complete deck you can play out of the box, but also contain new cards you can't find in other sets. Finding cards to complete a deck from scratch might seem like a feat, but keep in mind that you can buy singles on different websites and oftentimes even your local game store. There's a lot of big websites that sell singles in America and if you're in Europe the best place to search would be Card Market. If you don't have an account there but you're thinking about signing up one now, remember that you can put my username there, which is Rimfire, as the person who referred you. You might also be thinking whether or not Commander is for you because your opponents probably already have beefed up decks you won't be able to compete against. Power scale is not that important in a 4 player Commander game. In fact, the weakest player at the moment is also the least likely to get taken out as a priority. In EDH, the focus is mainly on the immediate highest threat and the most powerful opponent becomes the most targeted. This gives the slower paced decks a lot of room for setting up and even a shot at winning after you catch up or surpass the others because of being unbothered for so long. That's the amazing thing about Commander. You don't need to spend a fortune on the cards to excel in it. What you do need to do is know your opponents though. While they'll most likely keep surprising you with new deck ideas, after a few games you'll know how they play with the decks you played against already. There's a lot of cards that are very conditional, therefore not very expensive. This means that you can get them for a low price even if they are rares from very old sets. Depending on what carries your opponents in their games, you can almost always find easy solutions against it. They play Yogmoth, slam that life force down in your mono green and it becomes their kryptonite. You're playing a monocolor deck but the others have all those fancy multicolor lands. Primal Order is something you want to add to your deck. Gatherer is your friend when it comes for searching the keywords for what mechanics are the driving force of your opponent's decks. This way you'll find cards you probably didn't know about that might become favorite parts of your arsenal. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button if you found it helpful and have an awesome day.